My name is Cheryl Liwan Yi and I'm the EIA study team leader. Now I'm going to give a brief introduction about the proposed project. The title of this project is Proposed SFI Pulp and Paper Mill Expansion in SFI Complex Sipitang District Sabah. The project is proposed to expand the current SFI pulp mill from capacity of 106,000 tons per annum of bridge pulp to 210,000 tons per annum. The proposed expansion will be integrated with the existing mill within the SFI complex in Sipitang District Sabah without reclamation of new land area. The coal fire plant is proposed to meet the steam and power requirement for the expansion. The project proponent is Sabah Forest Industry Shandian Berhad. In accordance to the Environmental Quality Prescribed Activities Environmental Impact Assessment Order 1987, the proposed pulp and paper mill and its associated ancillary facilities is a prescribed activity which falls under the item 8, which is industry that the item G production capacity greater than 50 tons per day. The proposed coal fire plant is also a prescribed activity under the same A under the item 13, which is power generation and transmission. That the sub item A, construction of steam generation power stations, burning fossils, and having a capacity of more than 10 megawatts. The proposal for construction and operation of a secure landfill for containment of scheduled waste generated on site is also a prescribed activity under item 18, which is waste treatment and disposal. That the sub item A, toxic and hazardous waste, for number 4, construction of secure landfill facility. This proposed project falls under SAM Act for item number 2, power and paper mills, and number 4, construction of coal fire power plant. The EIA study assesses three components, which are the upgrade of the mill, the proposed coal fire plant, and the provision of a secure landfill. Environmental Impact Assessment EIA is a process used to predict the consequences of a proposed development on the environment. The objective of the EIA is to ensure that all impacts, direct and indirect, especially environmental, social, and economic associated with the proposed expansion of the integrated pulp and paper mill, installation of a new coal fire plant, and construction of a secure landfill are fully examined and addressed. The demand for paper continues to be strong despite belief that innovation in IT will result in a paperless global society. At present, the annual paper production can only meet 40% of the country's demand. Therefore, it can be said that Malaysia is still heavily dependent on foreign countries for the supply of pulp and paper products, particularly virgin pulp. The proposal by Sabah Forest Industry Sundaram Berhad SFI is to have a pulp mill with greater production capacity aimed at reducing the country's reliance on imported pulp as well as open export markets to overseas. SFI has been producing pulp only for its own consumption. The integrated pulp and paper mill turns pulp made from mixed tropical hardwood MTH species into fine quality printing and writing paper. SFI intends to progress further, that is to emerge as the local provider of pulp for the paper industry in Malaysia and beyond wealth at the same time, meet a part of the increasing demand in the country for fine quality paper. Hi, I'll talk about the project options. The main objective of the project to upgrade the current pulp and paper processes by means of the latest best available techniques PAT. All relevant techniques current available for prevention or reduction of emission waste and reducing consumption of energy and raw material both for new and existing installation. The most apparent options with linked to PAT proposed in the project are the bleaching techniques. In replacement of acetic elemental chlorine bleaching and modification in the popping system, overall, it is concluded that there are no significant differences to the environment or community with the two processes and the project profitability is considerably better with an elemental chlorine bleaching ECF sequence. Recent developments in clean coal technologies have improved the efficiency of coal combustion. Fluidized bed power generation system represent a significant advantage over conventional coal combustion technologies. The advantages of using fluidized bed combustion FBC are fuel flexibility, high combustion efficiency, and low NOx emissions. There are four types of particulate control options. First, electrostatic precipitate ESP. 
Second, fabric filter or bag house. Third, cyclone or multi cyclone collector. Fourth, wet scrubber. The comparison among the common SO2 control options and it shows the advantages of the proposed furnace sovereign injection system. Wet scrubber needs to use neutral alkalinity of seawater to absorb and neutralize the SO2, while furnace sovereign injection is applicable for fuel dust bed boiler. Prevention should be the priority for a waste management scheme followed by utilization with safe disposal as the final choice. Fire ash produces from the combustion of coal into coal fire boiler. Others will also produce ash such as cement and construction industry and forestry. This ash may be reused by cement, concrete and bricks industry instead of disposal. The project proponent has looked onto various types of liner in selecting the liners to be installed for this development and comparing the pros and cons of each type. High density polyethylene HDPE geomembrane and composite tree surplus were chosen. HDPE liner also has good physical properties such as high tensile strength and puncture resistance compared to most other synthetic linear materials. Tree surplus has higher chemical stability and extremely low permeability. There is no hint in profit to meet the market requirements in no project option. Hi everyone, I'm Eugene Long Yixian, as the AI trader in this project. I would like to talk about project location, project description, existing pulp and paper mill, and proposed pulp and paper mill after expansion. First, the project site is located at approximately 5.5 km southwest of Township of Sipitang and accessed via the Jalan Tun Hussain The mill sits within the boundary of SFI complex, which is made up of 10% of land wholly owned by the project proponent, covering a total area of 1,161.05 hectare. Next, project description. The existing SFI pound mill will be expanded by adopting best available technologies not only produced up to 210,000 TPA of paper from 106,000 TPA bridge pulp, but also to minimize existing environmental non-compliance and future impact. Bleaching will be done with an ECF sequence. Excess bridge pulp will be sold as market pulp shift. The total saleable paper and pulp after expansion will be 273,500 TPA. Furthermore, the main component of the existing pulp and paper mill are the wood handling plant, pulp mill, paper mill, raw water treatment plant, power generation plant, chemical preparation plant, bleaching plant, chemical recovery plant, and effluent treatment plant. Lastly, I will give the short description about proposed pulp and paper mill after expansion. A new plantation wood handling and preparation system is proposed to cater for the increased wood consumption of 80,000 GT per month from 60,000 GT per month in addition to the access with Tropica hardwood line. In the pub mill, the existing disaster will be upgraded to compact G2 cooking by adding an IMP bin and the disaster diesel used for extent cooking to increase the production to 750 ADT bridge pulp. In chemical preparation plant, a non integrated purchase based chlorine dioxide generator plan will be set up for the increased consumption of chlorine dioxide in correspondence to the implementation of the ECF process. In chemical recovery plan, installation of a new black liquor evaporator and recover boiler for addition black liquor solid load of 690 TPD. Both existing paper machines 1 and 2 will be upgraded to produce 210,000 TPA of paper. An extra sitter will be installed in the finishing house. A power sheet machine will be installed to manufacture market power sheet of 6,350 MT per annum from the excess bleach power. The index station and raw water treatment plant will be upgraded to handle the increased water demand after mill expansion.
new compressor and air dryer will be installed with a strategy device to reduce power consumption for production of compressed air. Assisting compressor can be operated at a low pressure. That's all from me. Thank you. I will further explain about project description. Firstly, I will talk about the coal fire plant, the proposed thermal power plant and various failure system. Among them, internal recirculation circulating fluidized bed combustion CFBC boiler. We will also talk about main plant building such as turbine house and deaeration house. Besides, we also cover ash and slag handling system, feed water system and coal handling system. Next, waste generation after expansion. When the capacity of mine increase, the potential pollutants emission will also increase. To encounter this, we will introduce the spill control system and effluent system into the project. This system can reduce the accidental or temporary discharge of liquid and fibers. Another component is atmospheric emission. This can be found in many parts of the production line. For example, bleach plant, digester, evaporation plant, and recovery plant. Hydrogen sulfide can be found in both boiler stack and smelt dissolved tank. To overcome this, we suggest a two-chamber electrostatic precipitators with three electrical fields each to remove solid particles. Next, for solid waste. The mine is expected to produce more solid waste after the scale of production being increased. Excluding domestic waste and waste generated by workshop maintenance, most of the waste are not directly usable in the process. For example, precipitated calcium carbonate, PCC, and green liquor dregs. The biggest waste contributor is the coal fire plant, which generates an estimated 73 to 98 tons per day of ashes. The use of non-regenerable solvent, such as limestone or lime, to reduce sulfur emission from the CFBC will sustainably increase the amount of boilers ashes. Lastly, on-site secure landfill. Targeted landfill is approximately 9.0 hectares on northwest of project site. The landfill floor will be divided into cells, each to be erected over a period in phases. At the initial phase, only one cell will be constructed. The first cell will have a life span of approximately 6 months and covers about 0.72 hectares. Subsequently, more cells will be constructed over the 9.0 hectares landfill floor. Factors deriving the life spams and the size of the subsequent cells in the later time would depend on the reduced volume of wastes that would eventually go to the landfill. As the project proponent continues to seek for recycling option for the wastes. That's all from me. Thank you. Hello, my name is Yo Yuan I'm gonna talk about the chapter 6 of EIA, Existing Environment. First, physical characteristic. The area that we analyze is partly covered by clay and silica sand. The sand is loose and have high permeability, thus make good aquifer. The clay areas are less permeable and thus do not make aquifer. The low-lying areas are swami and contain organic matter. They tend to pond during the raining season. Cement layer between the sand layers are less permeable and tends to create a perch water table when present. These are not consistent in terms of thickness, deep and lateral extent and do not contribute significant to the groundwater flow region. Second, Meteorology. We can analyze about the climate change, surface wind, rainfall, temperature, and humidity. For example, for humidity. Humidity refers to the moisture content of the air and can be expressed in a number of ways. The most common method of relative humidity is a measure of a measure of the actual water vapor pressure compared to the saturated vapor pressure expressed as a percentage at the saturated vapor pressure excess water vapor begins to appear 
as fine cloud droplets or fog if at ground level. The following features were observed yearly mean maximum relative humidity fluctuate in a range between 80% to 96% with most of the years remain constant consecutively. Means minimum relative humidity can vary from as low as 63% during the southwest monsoon months to 61% during the northeast monsoon period. Relative humidity has a large diurnal range from as low as 80% just after midday to 85% before dawn. Then, the other existing environment is the location uh, such as Burney Bay, uh, inland waters, surface waters quality, ground waters conditions, air quality, odor, existing noise and vibration that will affect the environment, etc. That's all for me. Thank you. Hi, I am Wong Cheng Yang. I am the subject consultant in this project. Today, I would like to share some information about evolution of impact. The major concerns for FFI, palm and pepper mill is equipment followed during operation and mill management practice. Any business and linkers from the SFI palm and pepper mill would link to possible contamination of both surface as well as marine water and air contamination. Well, a system release of waste, wastewater or spring chemical can potentially contaminate the receiving body with harmful toxic microorganisms, organic matter and nutrients magnitude of impact as related to the amount, type and concentration of the released substance can affect quality, aquatic life and eventually create human health problem in the long run. The operation of the pump and vapor mill will have some minor long-term impact to the degradation of air quality due to dust emulsion and gases emulsion. If the project is concluded that under normal control operation, the stock emulsion from the proposed FFI mean after expansion will have no adverse impact on the surrounding and build air quality. The long-term health risk posed to surrounding population is small and well within the acceptable level. One of the residual impact related to the postponed mill is the potential risk of accident, chemical spiklet, loss of condiment to the surrounding environment. In addition, Worker health will be more easily affected in the operate of the palm and pepper mill. For the worker, proper hearing protection devices as ear palm and ear mouth should be provided. Personal protect equipment and stranger work order is important to ensure that the potential long term impact is reduced significantly. It is also necessary that the worker are sent for medical check to ensure their health and well-being are general good. This is the table of hazard toxicity information, anticipated pollutant, non-carcinogenic. I hope you will enjoy my information about this project. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hasna Binti Abdullah and I am an EIA consultant. I would like to share to you guys the residual impact that happened during the proposed mill expansion and coal fire plant. This proposed mill expansion and coal fire plant has an impact during pre-construction, expansion and also the operation stages. There are many issues identified during the expansion and operation stages which are include noise impact, traffic impact and also socio-economic impact. The main beneficial impact from this pulp and paper product is that this proposed mill expansion 
will be in line with the government effort to encourage development of manufacturing facilities, capture the value added earnings from the processing, considering the potentially large amount of wood pulp expected to be produced, the venture is expected to be an, an important income earner and reduce Malaysians reliance on imported pulp to produce paper plus increase Malaysia revenue as a pulp exporter. Moreover, it will also give an impact to aquatic fauna. The aquatic fauna that involve a uh, fish fauna, fisheries, coral reef, and also macrobentos. BOD and COD discharge will be recorded. In conclusion, this proposed me expansion and co-fire plan give us an impact in so many ways. And I hope you will understand this information. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ismailiana Azriza. I'm one of the subject consultant in this team and would like to share about the mitigation measures of the impact. Based on the prediction of impact to be studied in Section 7, areas have been defined as important and should be given optimal focus when discussing mitigation and abatement measures. In this video, I would like to discuss some of the mitigation measures regarding with the impact that have been predicted. Firstly, it's about air pollution. Preventive maintenance and performance monitoring of each air pollution control system and prerequisite for an uninterrupted, continual and efficient operation of the control system. Performance monitoring procedures and requirements which are provided in Department of Environmental Guidance for the usage of industries and consultants can be used by SFI to plan their monitoring program for each pollution control system. Next is about order. It is important to carry out routine and diagnostic maintenance on all the order control systems. Interloading and alarm system must be installed to allow the smooth transition of main odorous gas destruction system to backup system during upsets, maintenance or other drone times. Third is about noise and vibration. For construction noise mitigation, it is recommended that all combustion engine plant, such as generators, compressors, should be checked to ensure they produce minimal noise with particular attention to residential grid exhaust silences. For operations noise mitigation, proper engineering noise controls should be designed on improved for power plant and paper machine department where noise levels must be predicted to exceed 80 dBA. Lastly, for future traffic impact, it is recommended to close monitoring of the traffic conditions to be done regularly at Sindumin City Tang Highway and rescheduling of transportation of locks to the project site shall be done where required to avoid undaily delays and conflicts at the cross junction. My name is Yong Manting. Today I'm going to discuss about the Environmental Management Plan EMP. EMP is important to give the project proponents a framework in order to mitigate effectively against any impact that is significant and randomly them to an accepted level by State Department of Environment DOE. The objective of EMP is ensure the proper implementation of pollution prevention and the mitigation measure for the proposed development. Besides, EMP also ensure the negative impact predicted are managed and minimized properly. So, as mentioned before, the main issue of concern during the construction and the operation stage uh, would be the air pollution, water pollution, noise impact, issue of the worker health and safety, social economy impact and the waste management. EMP in the EIA report cover both the construction and the operation phase of the project. This management plan identifies the standard and procedure 
for the environment management of the issue for implementing and the monitoring the relevant impact. The implementation is divided into two categories that are environment monitoring and the compliance audit programs. For the environmental monitoring, it's a set of the procedure targeted toward the periodical measurements of the environment parameter. Whereas for the environmental audit programs, it's to ensure that the aims and the objectives of the EMP are fulfilled, and if not, the suitable mitigation may be recommended to ensure the compliance. So for the environmental monitoring consists three types of the monitoring. They are the performance monitoring, compliance monitoring, and the impact monitoring. So the environment monitoring programs will state the relevant parameter, monitoring location, frequency, and the recommended limit that are required to be monitored as the stipulated by the DOE. So for the conclusion, the proposed expansion of Saba Forest Industries in Diran Perhat, the pole and the paper mill, is by means to upgrade the existing facilities to a bigger capacity for the better quality and the higher level by means of the latest best available technologies. Although it will pose some environmental issues, various measures were proposed to mitigate the and ease this impact. With the proper incorporation of the recommended of the measure by project proponents, this project will be implemented with the acceptable environmental risk and impact. So that's all for us. Thank you.